Hello everyone. I thought today I would make a video on one of my favorite tools for learning music and that is conducting. So you probably know conducting as something that you've seen somebody do standing in front of a group of people who are all trying to make music together. They're a very useful thing because they unite everybody in terms of the actual tempo, but more specifically and more importantly, they help to guide the musical interpretation choices of the group in terms of feel and dynamic level and articulation. They unite everybody together. But conducting just as a tool, by which I mean keeping track of the beat with a physicalization of your body with specific gestures for each beat, is a helpful tool for learning music for all musicians. And I use it a lot with my students. So there are three basic beat patterns that I'm gonna show you. There are variations and different styles of conducting, of course, but these are some basic ones that I think will help you. So four looks like this. I'm gonna do all the beat patterns with two hands, although you can, and commonly people only use one hand, because the video will reverse it, et cetera, et cetera, let's keep it uh, symmetrical. On top of which, your brain operates differently when you're using both sides of your body. And so when you're first learning conducting, it's useful actually to use both hands. So four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If I break it down for you, it's as if your hands are stopping, um, like you're trying to split a brick in half with your hands. No swing out on the downbeat. One. So down, then you're sweeping some of the dust from that brick in, out, and back up on the upbeat to get ready for the downbeat again. Down, in, out, up. Down, in, out, up. That's four. And it looks like this, too. People respond differently to different representations of things when they learn them. And this is helpful for some people more so than seeing my hands do it. So three just misses one of the legs of four, four. Three goes one, two, three. So four went one, two, three, four. Three goes one, two, three. So uh, down, out, up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Same rule for the downbeat. No swing out. Stop. Out and up. So that's three. One, two, three. Use that for a waltz. Da, 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 two, three, yeah. Two is different. Two is like a backwards J and then you trace right back up where it went. Some people also do two in a straight line. One, two, one, two, one, two. I kind of like this curvy one. One, two, one, two, one, two. So here are the beat patterns again. One, two, three, four, and then three. One, two, three, and two. One, two. I'll say the choreography of them. Four, three, and then two. Down, in, out, up. That's four. Down, out, up. That's three. Backwards, J, up. That's two. So I challenge you to... Um, Conduct along to songs that you know, like happy birthday to you, to happy birthday to you. That's in three, right? So the thing about conducting as a tool is it's only helpful when it becomes second nature to you and when you don't have to actually think about where do I need to move my hand. Otherwise, it's like actually learning choreography along with learning a song. So in order to do that, if you just challenge yourself to kind of get your conducting hand going uh, regularly, you will find that it will then become second nature to you. And then when you're looking at a piece of music and you're figuring it out, to have a hand to conduct it just when you're figuring it out with your mind is extremely helpful because you know where each of the beats are. You can literally separate, separate out each rhythm into the beat. The information for the first beat, the information for the second beat, the information for the third beat, the information for the upbeat. So good luck. Get your conducting hat on and see how quickly you can make conducting a part of your musical learning toolkit. Good luck and enjoy.